A lot of speculation was going on what kind of engine would be in this car. It's a four liter, flat six, six cylinder engine, normally aspirated. It has 525 horsepower, so that's 15 more than on a GT3. How did we do that? Different camshafts, different setup, and um, the camshaft has higher overlap, creating more ferocity in the revving up dynamics, more power at high RPMs, which is a 9,000 RPM red line, and made it to this fire-breathing engine is a PDK gearbox, quite typical for an RS variant because it's really quicker on the track. And this gearbox has a shorter final drive, if you compare it to the GT3's unit, to compensate the bigger wheels. 335 section tires, wider track, all ball jointed multi-link rear axle, the newest generation of race dampers in this car. And um, this is neatly mated to the front end of the car which has a 275 tire, a wider track than on the GT3 by 29 millimeters and a whole bespoke new wheel guiding components like the control arms or the wheel knuckles. We have a deeper pivot point here. So that gives us kind of an anti-dive system to the car that enables us to keep the car always at the same pitch, including under very hard braking, though that means that the distribution between the front downforce and the rear downforce on the car always stays the same and the car is very controllable because there's no shift in downforce on the car. This car here has a 410 mm PCCB brake system, which we know from the predecessor and which is superb on the track and on the street. As standard equipment, the car comes with a steel rotor, which is revised and enhanced over the ones we use in the GT3. The steel rotors are thicker, they create more longevity on the track, and the rear calipers on this car have a different piston diameter to get even more stopping power from the super wide rear to create the best stopping times and stopping distances I think we ever had on any street car in Porsche. On the quest for maximum brake performance, we have aerodynamical aid here as well because we can influence this rear wing, which folds up as an active air brake. So we create more resistance, more wind resistance to the car under hard braking, which even decreases the stopping times and makes stopping distances a lot shorter. There's another trick we have up the sleeve. We can control compression and rebound of the dampers in the car. The driver can do it himself. It's really very neat. You don't have to go underneath the car and uh, play around with damper settings there. You can do it from the cockpit. We have the satellites here on the steering wheel where we can influence compression and rebound for front and rear axle. By turning the knobs, which are mirroring the same position than the satellites here, you can adjust rebound more or less front and rear and can create your own individual setup. But the PSM system, the damper control, is not all you can do here. There's another button here that says ESC TC, that's a traction control. By push of that button, you get another screen and you can adjust the traction control to your liking and you can even turn it completely off. Another thing you can control here is the electronic rear differential. You can influence the values for coast and power to your liking. Very good if you have damp conditions or if you have a bumpier road and you can influence the car's behavior upon braking and exiting the curve by a big time here. There will be a Weissach package as well available for the car. Traditionally, the Weissach package shows off more carbon fiber than this non-Weissach variant here. That means the front lid is carbon fiber, visible carbon fiber. The roof is visible carbon fiber. And for most markets, we offer a rear roll cage made of carbon fiber as well, which is uh, in itself six kilos lighter than the steel variant. Another goodie here for the Weissach package is you can order the car with magnesium forged wheels as well, which shave off another eight kilos of the car's overall weight, which in its uh, lowest spec is 1450 kilograms, which is quite a low figure for a car like that, for the size of the car and for all the technology involved. So that rounds it off. 
I think we have the most hardcore GT variant to date standing here behind me. And um, there's so much technology and innovation going on, not only to make the car faster, to make it more fun to drive as well. I love to drive it, especially in the high speeds corners on every given track. It's mind boggling what this car can do. It's so much fun and um, I really love to drive it and I'm absolutely sure you will love it too.